the legend in calf roping, Roy Cooper. Roy, this is the first year that you missed the NFR. Two-part question, where were you while it was going on, and how did you feel about it? I was at the island. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I uh, had a lot of changes in the, through this year, 1988, and should make me tougher, should make me stronger as a person inside, and I'll come back and be a world's champion. We're pulling for him. He needs 18.7 seconds or less to take the average lead, Clem. Oh, Lord, he got this one out 30 feet if he laid him out an inch. You're seeing the old-time Roy Cooper, and like you said a moment ago, this cat will be back, period. And hands in the air, what a familiar sight, the long-legged Roy Cooper walking back to his horse. The time, 12.5 seconds, the total 33.3. That moves him into the lead. See how late he was getting out. He reaches back and uh, urges old Sarl on. He's popular everywhere, but especially here in Oklahoma. And the Oklahoma fans just love him. He's uh, kind of the perpetual Huck Finn, fast hands. Missed the uh, second wrap there, but he recovered beautifully. And now that is the man to beat in the average in the calf roping, and this is the guy that can do it. Lindell Walters, the only man with a chance. He needs 15.6 seconds or less to win the average. This man has roped like a champion all week, like a man possessed. These are his kind of calves. Look at that. Drew a good one, just like Tom Walker said, and holy yes, cow. Sir. What would it be, like nine or something? Look at his time, 9.2 seconds. The total, 26.8. Lindell Walters shows how it's done, and if this holds up, yes, sir, he will be the winner. Boy, look at this. Swings three, four times. Now watch this. Pulls the slack down smoothly. Five steps. Flanks him low. Calf takes a tie. Here's our circuit champion. Hands in the air, and what a great way to end with that time, 9.2 seconds. Well, that does it for the calf roping. Lindell Walters wins at 26.8 seconds. Second place goes to Roy Cooper, and third place goes to Tom Walker. Now Shelly Burmeister standing by with the winner, Lindell Walters. Well, the winner in the calf roping tonight, Lindell Walters on 26.8 on three head. That is not only excellent, but you beat Roy Cooper as well. I just had a lot of luck here, had some nice kids. Things went my way. Let me ask you, when you're getting down to the wire, which you kind of went towards the end, that puts a lot of pressure on you, doesn't it? Yeah, there was there was some pressure. I had a three-second lead over Roy. You know, and Roy run his calf off down, tied him down, and just hope for the best, you know. I got lucky. Oh, I don't know if you got lucky or if you're just talented, but congratulations to Linda Walters. Hey, don't go away, because we'll be right back with more rodeo action. Hello, I'm Barbara Mandrell, asking you to join with me in honoring some very special forgotten heroes. The men and women of our local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies who have given their lives in the line of duty. My father was a policeman, and I can remember as a little girl seeing my mother watch and wait for him to come home. We were lucky. He always did come home. Other families have not been as fortunate. Over the years, 30,000 law enforcement officers have lost their lives in the service of others. Congress has set aside land near our nation's capital for a National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial to honor these fallen heroes and all law enforcement officers. It will be built with private funds as a gift from the American people to those who have given so much. Your help is urgently needed. Please send your tax-deductible contribution today or call this number for more information. For today's top hits, concert information, and country's brightest stars, join us weekdays for Video Country. It's the best music you'll ever see, right here on TNN. Gardeners, if you love fresh-tasting vegetables and big, beautiful flowers, but think results like this take too much time and too much back-breaking work, here's great news. Introducing the affordable Troy Built Junior, designed especially for smaller gardens. Just look at the time and work that Junior will save you. It's so easy to prepare perfect ready-to-plant seed beds. Plus, working organic matter into your soil is a snap. Spot-till areas for beautiful flower gardens and borders. Why, you can even use the Junior to reseed your lawn or ring fruit trees. You'll be amazed at how much time and work the Junior will save you. 
So if you want to learn more about getting results like this, the fast, easy Troy Built way, call now to receive your free Troy Built catalog. For your free catalog featuring the Junior and our whole line of Troy Built tillers, including our no money down easy payment plan, call toll free 1-800-468-2100. Operators are standing by. That's 1-800-468-2100. Call now. Back in the Prairie Circuit Finals, just a couple of events to go for you right now. Saddle Bronc riding, and after the first two go-rounds, Robert Etbauer, the man to beat with 157 total points. Skeeter Thurston behind him with 150, and Joe Nichols in third place, 145 as we head into the final go-round. And the first man coming up comes all the way from Kansas, Rod Breach. He's on Rollin' Roll. Here's a horse from the Dell Hall string, and a good one. It's one that Rod Breach wants to draw. And he's doing uh, extremely well. Very nice shift. Right in time, and now towards the end of the ride, the horse right in with him and kind of waning a little bit in the final seconds there, Clint, but a good ride by Rod Breach. I think as we uh, kind of critique this, the uh, only thing you might, uh, hey, good score, though, 74. 74 points. Yes, sir, his total is 141. Had he gotten a little, uh, a little more in the front end, out about the five or six second mark, you see those, uh, his feet just aren't quite going up as far forward as those judges would like. But hey, he'll take a 74 any day. Absolutely, a 74 on that ride, absolutely. Joe Nichols coming up next on Bay Buckaroo, 141. That is the score to beat. Joe's average is already 145. He's riding for the glory here. And here's a guy that's a cowboy in an arena or in a pasture. He's a roper and a rider and a darn good guy. Dave Buckaroo of the Dell Hall String didn't have the night that we've seen him have, but uh, he'll get a good uh, average score, I'd imagine. Let's kind of guess. What do you say, 68 or 9? Or I was going to say in the high 60s. He got a little out of shape for it. Well, there we go, a 70 for Joe. Looked like towards the end of the ride, he was a little out of shape there. Clem just pulled a little bit forward. Well, we always, we always were conservative judges. <laughs> <laughs> Not the snap that the previous horse had. Joe's looking pretty good here, but he's he goes back uh, toward the wall. Joe just a little bit out of shape right there, and I think he'd be the first guy to tell you that. His total is 215, makes him the man to beat. As we move on now to Doug Dyer, his average is 136 after two goal rounds, and he is on wildfire. Here's a former state high school champion in Oklahoma twice, and a kid that I don't think has ever reached his potential. If this kid ever learns how to win, he's going to be tough because he can sure ride. I'll tell you what, the first three jumps of that ride just looked as good as it gets. Right, high kicking, Doug riding time. The judge is giving 74 points. A good score brings his total to 210. Good enough for second place right now. This kid is built like and rides a lot like the three times world's champion Bill Smith. Now, he doesn't ride like him every time, but for the first five seconds, he rides his horse just about as well as anyone. He is oh so close to being a great champion. Coming up next is Robert Etbauer. And before the rodeo tonight, Shelley had a chance to talk with him. Robert, you got a horse out tonight called I Walk Alone. A famous horse has gone to the national finals rodeo of Benny Butler's. Tell us a little bit about him. Oh, he's a good horse. Just good in the shoot. Turns out there and really bucks. Uh, my brother got on him here at Oklahoma City. Uh, couple weeks ago and bucked him off as a matter of fact and I've been on him once and placed on him uh, he's a good horse I think I can win the round on him sure get a check if I ride him out little confidence that's what we like to see as well he should he needs 59 points or better to take the lead he's got 157 going into this third go round not a bad place to be this horse I walk alone a namesake for another I walk alone 20 years previous in the Butler string and look at this at Barrett believe I'll just be quiet. Let's watch a whale of a bronc ride. Boy, Clem, when you talk about classics, the look, that's the way it looks right there, folks. Robert Bauer doesn't work a whole lot better than that. He needs 59 points. Probably could have done that with one leg. It's oh, in the hands Lord, of the judges now. Listen to the crowd. They know what they've just seen. And look at this score now. 78 points for Robert Etbauer and a total of 235. Yes, sir. A very, very good score. Tough to beat. Well, at least I've got a grin from this very uh, stoic guy. Now, you talk about class. This young man has it. He's been there the lead for the world's title all year. And you're seeing a classic bronc ride now. Look at that spurring oh, yeah. stroke. 
Look how he uses that buck rein for balance. Any great bronc rider knows what to do with the buck rein. We're moving along now to shoot number two and Gordon Simonson from Purdom, Nebraska, and he is on Grasshopper. This great horse from the Benny Butler string is probably one of the top two or three bucking horses in all of professional rodeos. He's big, strong, oh. stout. Look at the power he's throwing to this man. And Simonson oh. thought he had him conquered, and Gordon says, I'd like to have him back. But that's where this horse gets most of it. I tell you, Gordon gets no score, but that look on his face shows it all. What a tough ride. He's turned backs to the left. Look at what this big, stout horse does. Look at him throw the power to him, stands him in the right stirrup, and kerchief. He got slammed up. And he shakes that arm. Better luck next time. You're looking at Skeeter Thurston. Last man up before the rodeo. Shelly had a chance to talk with Skeeter. Skeeter, what would you say is probably the most difficult part about saddle bronc riding? Oh, probably the hardest part is, uh, oh, in my opinion, would be balance and uh, timing. It, it seems like uh, some people, are, they call what they call it natural, you know, and uh, they have that balance and that timing. And then there's some people that go on and on and seem like they can never get it. It's kind of like dancing. You have uh, you have people that can really dance and people that don't look that great dancing. Strangely, I never equated riding Bronx with dancing, but I'll look at it in a whole different light next dance I go to. He's on Coco Loco. Not impossible. He needs 85 points, Clem. Well, at 85 is going to be difficult to get on this Benny Butler horse. He could get up in the 70s, but an 85 or 6 is just uh, near impossible. But he looks Skeeter, very Thurston strong is right looking here. Good. I tell you what, it looked like his right leg was not quite keeping up with his left. We'll have to see what the judges think about it. Well, it's not all lost. He's going to win second in the Bronc riding. A good ride, and he, of course, the 85 points, as you mentioned, going to be very, very tough to beat. But a good ride by Skeeter Thurston. Now it's in the hands of the judges. All he has to beat is a 66, and he'll be solid in second place. And the judge is giving him a score, and that's where he's going to end up here, Clem. 70 points, a total of 220. Skeeter Thurston ends up in second place. A very good ride, just 85, very tough to get all the money. And that's how it ends up here this evening at the Lazy E in the Saddle Bronc riding. Robert Etbauer wins it with 235, Skeeter Thurston with 220, and Joe Nichols with 215. Shelly Burmeister standing by right now with our winner, Robert Etbauer. Our winner on a horse called I Walk Alone, Robert Edbard. We talked to you a little bit earlier while the bareback riding was still going on. Wasn't sure the score 78 was going to stick. It did. And what a perfect name, I Walk Alone, both of you together. Yeah, he's a good horse. Uh, I felt like I could have rode him a little better, but he's a bucker, you know, and I'm just happy to get done what I did. Let me ask you, in an arena, which most of them vary in all sizes, this one in particular is quite large. Is that a disadvantage or an advantage for bucking horses? Uh, some horses like it better. Like horses like him, you know, it don't matter where you got them or what. I mean, they're going to buck. But some of them older horses, you know, that's been to a bunch of rodeos, yeah, smaller arenas help them. Well, congratulations to you and I Walk Alone. We'll be back right after this. We've still got lots more action to come. One, two, three, four. Hey there, it's me, Richard Simmons. Listen, are you sick and tired of boring look-alike exercise videos with synthesized elevator music and a lineup of leotard-clad Stepford wives? Well, if you are, honey, have I got the cure for you. This is my brand new aerobic workout tape, Sweatin' to the Oldies. And if you don't like having fun, <laughs> well, you best not come in here. Whoa! Sweatin' to the Oldies is pure enjoyment. You won't hear any wall-to-wall -wall instructional chatter on this tape, but you will hear all of my favorite heart something tunes from the 50s and 60s. If you're trying to lose weight and you want to keep your heart in great shape, just try sweating to these classics. I made this tape with everyone in mind, for you beginners out there to those of you who are already in great shape. So if you're looking for a lively, entertaining, stimulating, humorous, colorful, frolicking, playful, inspiring, safe, low-impact workout that's full of kicks, thrills, gusto, fervor, passion, fury, bustle, and action, you don't have to look any further. This is it. Wow! So come on, what are you waiting for? Come join the party! 
At just $39.95, Sweat into the Oldies is the hottest selling workout tape in America. It's not sold or rented in any store, so you must call this toll-free number to order your copy. 1-800-832-4900. That's 1-800-832-4900. From Ain't No Mountain High Enough to Beyond the Sea, Sweat Into the Oldies is jam-packed with 45 minutes of your favorite 50s and 60s hits. So call 1-800-832-4900. Test your country by watching Fandango, the longest-running original game show on cable TV. Bill Anderson hosts this fun-filled half-hour, loaded with prizes, surprises, and comments from Edgar, the world's only wise-cracking game board. TNN's one-of-a-kind game show is one-part trivia contest, one-part fan club, and one-part name that tune. It's challenging fun for fans who really know their country. Fandango, weekdays at 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on TNN. Welcome back to Guthrie, Oklahoma, and friends, it all comes down to this as we get ready for the final go-round in the bull riding, and it doesn't get much closer. Mark Boer in first place with 153, Paul Peterson with 152, and Jerry Wright right behind them with 151 as we have a very nice look at the ladies, Susie Geppert and Tina Bales, former and new Miss Rodeo, Oklahoma. We're going now to shoot number three to start things off, Jerry LaValle on Market Fox, Clem. Jerry LaValle will weigh about 138 pounds, soaking wet, but he has got a sense of balance that won't quit. He's on a good run for Bull, and look, he, he's up on his rope, not out of shape yet. See how this Bull kind of tippy toes down? Yes. No timing, bad drive, bad. And Jerry was right there with him in good shape the whole ride. Makes a nice ride, heads for the safety, kind of rubbing his arm a little bit. But now the judges look very good from where we're sitting. The judge is going to give Jerry LaValle a good score as well, Clem. 74 points, the total 150. A good ride. You know the stress and the power that a bull can throw at a man. This man weighs 135 or 40, the bull about 1,600. No wonder those arms get sore. Well, that left arm was what he was rubbing. It looked like the one about second jump into it really got put down on it very hard. A good ride by Jerry LaValle. You're looking at the grip of Raymond Wessel from Cedar Point, Kansas, and he is on ribeye. Wessel has, uh, this has not been Raymond Wessel's no. week. Let's hope that he uh, can whistle up tonight. See if he can turn things around here in this final go-round, make him feel better. As he heads down the road, he's on ribeye. Now he's heading. Here we go. This. Ouch. And he's still in there, Clem. Oh, man. Raymond Wessel goes down very, very hard. You can see him being attended to there in the arena, and it looked like that second jump brought him right down on the horns, Clem. This is one of the dirtiest bulls. You know, by that I mean he has a tendency to jerk you down on his head. He's owned by Dale Hall or some of the other uh, contestants look on. Let's hope Ray isn't uh, seriously injured. He's a double tough son of a gun. He's up, kind of getting up. Man, oh man, he's setting up and now being helped to his feet. And it looked like that first shot should have just knocked him cold. No score. It's just been, as you say, that kind of a week for Raymond West. The crowd gives him a good hand. But Rodeo Bull Fighters, uh, Rex Dunn and Ted Kinsey right in there on top of things trying to help a little bit. Well, let's take one more look here at that ride, Clem. See if we can see what happened. Now, right about here. So he jerks him down. Oh, man. Now he's upside down. Hangs up for a moment. And there's Rex Dunn dancing in front of the bull, but uh, luckily he walked away. Well, we're getting set now to go on to Mark Boer, and before the rodeo, Shelley talked with Mark. Mark, what goals have you set for yourself in the rodeo business? Well, uh, right now my main goal is just to ride my bull tonight. I've got a pretty tough bull, and I'm just going to try to get around him, and then I'll worry about the next goals. And that's the way it is. got to take him one at a time, and Mark is on Whirly Bird here this evening. Well, Mark Burr, Peterson, and uh, Rule and Ryder all together within two points. If he can go another two seconds, he did not. Oh, I was just going to say he just needs a good solid ride here. It looked like he got back away from his hand, Clem, and just down early for no score. Boy, he is because of with just two points separating the top three men. Mark knows if I ride this one, I'm going to win or win the horse in second. Now he, he's starting real well. So Looks far, good so right good. There. 
Right here, see the ball kind of shift, go back. Uh, then when he does, Mark is getting behind right now. And you make one mistake on a ball like that, and it's Curtis. A moment ago, Raymond Wessel had a tough ride. Shelley's with him right now. Ray, I know this isn't your night, and I know you're out of breath as well. Had some tough luck in the bull riding. We wanted to make sure you're all right. Yeah, <laughs> it's been tough all weekend. He just kind of stepped on me. I hung up to him. I hung up the first night here, and I got on two last night, so it hasn't been very good. But all I can say is it's over, and I can go the next one. So hanging up's been your technique this week? Well, to two of them, so far it seems to have been. All right, well, we're glad you're all right. We wanted to make sure that Dan, he's going to be fine. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Shelly. Some weeks you just wish you'd have gone camping. I like Wesley. He kind of stepped on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of hit him there. We got a good look at Richard Rule getting set to ride. On Benny Butler Cyclone, this could be the matchup of the night. Here's a guy that can ride and bull at can buck. And here's a guy that's tapped yeah. off well. Look, he needs the yeah. outside foot, gets back in there. Oh, here is yeah, a great bull sir. ride. I, I mean, he's right he on he the so. Right on the buzzer. Yeah, I think he thinks he made it, and he did. Yes. And look, Benny <laughs> Butler, the bull's owner, shaking hands with him, so he made it. <laughs> and he hit the ground very hard there at the end. I believe this score is going to make you feel better. 82 points. Look at that on Cyclone. Yes, sir. Chip had a total of 151. Good from start to finish, Clint. Yes, indeed it was. Here, here's a guy that's just putting a clinic on that. Seeing use that outside foot, anchors that inside foot. Bull just keeps going yes, to the right, sir. and it's a little more difficult because he's spinning away from his hand. What a ride, 82 points. Friends, it doesn't get much better than this. We're getting down to the last two riders, and Jerry Wright, if he stays on this bull spotted fever, is going to move into first place. Yes, indeed he will. He could become the first man to ride three of these bulls. Here's another one of the great Benny Butler bulls, and this spotted fever started down in Florida. So from the Florida connection, here is Jerry Wright on Benny Butler's spotted fever. Just needs to stay on, and he's got a good seat right now. Oh, shouldn't have said anything. Got back away from his arm. I'm not sure that Jerry didn't overcompensate a little bit. Man, oh man, down for no score. And maybe we'll get a chance to see in the replay here, Clint. You can see his total, 151. Very disappointed. Let's see what happens. Uh, so far, he's in pretty good shape. Then the bull will drop this shoulder. And see, you see, he overcompensates right there. Trying to maintain the balance and equilibrium that right arm, he gets into the way. See the judges there. Butch Kirby, the 78 world champion bull rider, looking on, keeping track of things for you. Paul Peterson is the next man up. He's the last man up. He could win it all. Before the rodeo, Shelley had a chance to talk with him. Paul, you have got a great bull of Benny Butler's out tonight. Bull number 11. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, I got on him at North Platte this year, and he throwed me off. So it's kind of revenge time for him. Uh, he's real good. He can go either way. And he's real fast. You know, I don't... Every time they've rode him, they've been in the high 80s on him this year. So it ought to be good. It ought to be good. It all comes down to this right now. Paul Peterson stays on Bandit, and he will win the overall average in the bull riding. Your rodeo hard all summer long. It comes down to eight seconds. One yes. man, one bull. Can good he do it? Can right he do it? There. No. 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 Paul Peterson just had to stay on the bull, got back away from his hand and down. And I mean, nobody in the arena feels worse than he does. Let's see what happened, Clint. Well, I'll tell you, the bull was just too much for him. I think Paul would be the first man to tell you. He just throws that power, and he's not spinning flat at all. He's keeping high those hind feet. And would you believe that bull riding is going to be one on two bulls? And Mark Boer is the man that does it. The total, 153. Paul Peterson in second place. And third place, a tie between Richard Rule and Jerry Wright. Shelley's with our winner. Mark, we talked to you earlier because you got backed off. We didn't think you could win it. Did you think that you would have a chance? No, not really at winning. I figured someone would ride three head, but I'm glad. I wish, I don't like to wish bad luck. I'm sure glad I won it. I, it's a real, really ought to pump me up so I can go on and maybe keep riding well. I just wished I could have rode three head and won it like that rather than to ride two and, and win it. But I'm happy. Hey, you should be. Congratulations to Mark Moore. We'll be back to wrap up the bull riding and the rest of the rodeo right after this.
This big bass is hiding in thick weeds. What lure would most pros use to tempt this trophy bass? I'm Ray Scott, and if you want to learn more about catching bass in any situation, then join the over half million members of bass who are enjoying fishing success. Helping you to become a better bass fisherman is what we're all about. As a member, you get 10 big issues of Bassmaster magazine packed with how-to articles. In each issue, you'll fish beside bass and greats like Denny Breyer, Jimmy Houston. Plus, you'll learn the swimming spoon is one of the best lures for bassing in thick weeds. So join bass today. Call toll-free now, and you'll get your free gift. Call 1-800-238-9300 to join Bass. In addition to 10 big issues of Bassmaster and full membership credentials, you'll get a free tackle pack including auger tail worms, Berkeley trilene line, man's baby one minus lure, and the free book Bass and Magic. That's 1-800-238-9300. We'll gladly bill you. Live music and conversation, the hottest videos, and the latest entertainment news. Weeknights on TNN. And as the crowd makes their way out of the Lazy E Arena, we draw to a close. The 1988 Prairie Circuit Finals for you right here on TNN. Some of the best cowboys in the world gathered here this evening, and some of the best stock as well as we saw in the bull riding. Boy, you're not kidding. Some of the greatest bucking bulls in all of professional rodeos. And, of course, a lot of people thought, hey, nobody's going to ride three, and sure enough, they didn't. And Mark Gore might think he backed into it, but topping two of these is darn good. Absolutely. Very good stock in the bull, fighting, bull riding this evening. We talk about... A split second meaning the difference between lots of money and the steer wrestling tonight, it came true. A tenth of a second separating two of the greatest steer wrestlers in the modern day era. Roy Duvall, Joel Edmondson. Joel got the brakes tonight. He wins. Duvall also ran. But it's happened. It happened. Matter of inches and seconds. Of course, our congratulations go out to the all-around winner, Roy Cooper. Mr. Cowboy does it again. Does a great job. Well, that does it for us here. For Shelley Burmeister, Clem McSpadden, myself, Dan Miller, we say thank you for joining us. We'll see you the next time we all get together. Goodbye.